Hello everyone and welcome to Media to Pick where we nitpick the media. We're your hosts Jayla and Cameron. On today's show, we're going to be talking about all things reboots, remakes, and revivals. Oh my. Oh, that reminds me. Have you seen that the creator of Blackish is doing a remake of The Wizard of Oz? I have not seen that, although that doesn't surprise me. There have been so many remakes of different movies in the past few years, it is honestly hard to keep up. You're telling me. So wait, you said reboots, remakes, and revivals? Oh my. What's the difference between them? Because honestly, they all sound the same to me. I'm so happy you asked. You did not bring an entire notebook of I research. I did. I really did. Okay. So, a remake is an updated version of one kind of film. So, like, the movie musical Annie, for instance. That's been remade so many times over, but the story is always the same. Okay. That makes sense. So, what's a reboot, then? A reboot is a new version of an original film or television show. So like the 2016 Ghostbusters that stars Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, Gabe McKinnon, and Leslie Jones is a reboot of the original 1984 film. Wouldn't that be a remake? I just said it was a reboot. It says it right here. Can you explain why? Oh yeah. Well, as we all know, the original was all men. But for the 2016 version, Paul Feig, the director, reimagined the story with an all-female cast, changing the vision of it entirely and unfortunately got a lot of backlash because of it, which is another story for another time. I really like that movie. Me too. Okay, so we got reboot and a remake. What's a revival? I've really only heard that used to be for television. Well, that's because that's really only what it is for. It's a, co- it's a continuation of the same story that was told however many years ago when the original show came out. There are a lot of revivals that we come out recently that are from the 90s television, like Full House has Fuller House on Netflix. Boy Meets World has World on Disney Channel. Saved by the Bell, 90210, all that. Will and Grace, the list goes on and on. I just realized not a single one of those shows are on the air anymore. I mean, I think we can all agree that not all revivals, even reboots and remakes, are always great. But some are like, really enjoyed Fuller House, as cheesy as it was. Not amused, though. That show lasted five seasons. It couldn't have been that bad if it lasted that long. So many Netflix shows never even make it to a second season. You can say that with a lot of streaming services. Gone are the days when television shows are actually given a fighting chance to survive. I'm sure it has to do with the fact that there's so much content everywhere to consume. The number of streaming services readily available for anyone with an internet connection is unbelievable. So is Fuller House your favorite revival of a TV, a television show? Maybe not my favorite, but it definitely did a good job at bringing back the nostalgical from Full House. How about your favorite movie reboot or remake? Hmm. Uh, Have you seen the recent West Side Story? That was really good, and most of it was filmed in Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, and Rita Moreno, who was the original, it's one a good one, too. I love a good cameo, but I haven't seen that one yet. I heard it's pretty high up there for a remake, maybe even better than the original. So what's your favorite reboot? or remake, or whatever. I honestly thought you would never ask. Oh, you don't need your research for this one? I don't, no. Great. So have you ever seen the movie A League of Their Own? I can't say that I have, no. Well, you should. The movie came out in 1992. Probably why I haven't seen it. Not a good excuse. I mean, it kind of is. Can I please finish talking? Yes, sorry, go on. As I was saying, this movie came out in 1992, and it's about the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League that was established in 1943 during World War II. The men were being drafted and was taking all the professional baseball players, so they decided to scout women to keep the sport going. The movie follows one particular baseball team, the Rockford Peaches. So, it's a documentary? No, it's completely fictional and historical accuracy sprinkled in. Interesting.
okay, so is this a reboot or remake or something? You know, since this is what the show is about. If you would stop interrupting me, I would have gotten to that part already. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, this movie is not a reboot, but recently Prime Video released a TV series called A League of Their Own, which is a reboot or uses air or uses of the movie and it's very, very good. The first season is eight episodes, each an hour long. It follows the Rockford Peaches in nineteen forty three, just like the movie. But you said this is a reboot. This sounds more like a remake. Again, if you let me finish, the movie is about the women playing baseball. This series is about the women who happen to play baseball. So yes, it's about the Rockford Peaches, but none of the characters are the same. And we get so many more stories that happen beyond behind the league. We have many, many queer stories. We get to learn about the black women who played baseball during that time. It's just a very inclusive, important piece of media that isn't shown enough in general, but should be. It sounds it. What's even better is that not only is there diversity on screen, but there's also diversity behind the scenes, too. Writers of all different genders, race, identities are in there making sure that these stories are being told the right way, along with the extensive amount of research that went into it. You definitely hear that more so now than we did in 1992. I'm sure, but it's not a normal thing to hear, unfortunately. Exactly. Co-creators Abby Jacobson from Broad City and Will Graham really loved the movie, but didn't want to remake it. They just wanted to find out the stories within, and I think they did a really good job at it. Oh, Abby Jacobson is one of the co-creators? I love her. Not only that, she's one of the She's one of the stars along with Darcy Carden, who plays Janet on The Good Place, Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec, Roberta Colandres from Vita, Melanie Phil from Florida Girls. I could keep going, but I won't because it seems like you're getting bored. No, I'm not. The casting sounds good. Incredible. Are there any of the actors from the movie and the show? They really wanted to keep the movie and the show as separate as possible for the first season, but they did have one really great cameo, and you know I love a good cameo. So, you said before. Rosie O'Donnell, who plays Doris Murphy, the third baseman on the Peaches in the movie, makes a very important cameo in episode 6 as the owner of an illegal gay bar, though not her original character. As a queer woman who helped pave the way for others, Abby and Will felt it was very important to have her in the movie. You said an illegal gay bar? Remember, this is set in the 1940s, when you could be beaten and thrown in jail if anyone found out you were gay. Oh, right. Well, what about the women who were in the actual league? Are any of them still alive? Did they get to consult with them? Actually, yes. Maybelle Blair is one of the consultants on the series. Back in 2017, when Abby and Will met up with her to explain the possibility of telling queer stories in the show, she confirmed that many of the women were having affairs with other women in the league, but the best part is that 92 years old, Maybelle came out to them. It was the first time she had said it out loud. Oh, wow. Then she came out to the world a few months ago at the Tribeca Film Festival when they were promoting the show. That is amazing. Isn't it? This show is for everyone of every age, race, gender, everything. I guarantee you'll be rooting for every character in this show. I'm very excited to check it out, and I hope our audience does too, if they haven't already. I hope they do. We need a season two like yesterday. They ended on a really good cliffhanger, and I'm dying to know what happens next. Well, I think that's a perfect place to head into a commercial break, but you, sure, you should sure stick around because we have trivia coming up, and it's all about reboots, remakes, and revivals. Oh my. I can't wait. Me either. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. (laughs) 
Welcome back to Media Toothpick. We have a new setup because we're going to be doing trivia about all things reboots, remakes, and revivals. Oh my, I'll be your host and we'll have two contestants here with us. One of them you may recognize and the other claims to be a super fan of all things media. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Sam and I'm from Union, New Jersey and I'm going to win this whole thing. Wow, we have at Media Toothpick love this kind of energy. They scare me. It'll be fine. Okay, so the rules are simple. I'm going to read a question and the first person to buzz and the answer is correct gets a point. Any questions? Can we steal a question if we get it wrong? No stealing questions, okay? Great. Hey, first question. In this movie remake from the 1950s film of the same name, we follow the lives of 12 kids and their parents. Yes, Sam. Cheaper by the dozen. That's correct. One point for Sam. Okay, next question. This movie originally starred Judy Garland in 1954, Barbara Streisand in 1976. And most recently, Lady Gaga in 2018, remake of what movie? Yes, Sam. A Star is Born. That's correct. I think the buzz is broken. Uh, it's clearly not broken. Okay, question three. This movie remade in 2017 is about a monster that shapeshifts into a clown named Pennywise. Go oh, ahead. I know. It. That's correct. Finally, on the board. Next question. This television show starring Miranda Cosgrove originally came out in 2007 on Nickelodeon about a team web star and has recently been revived by Paramount Plus. Go ahead. <coughs> iCarly. Yes, that's correct. Okay, next question. This revival is on its fifth season and goes by a different name than its original after the star of the show was fired. It stars John Goodman and Lori Metcalf. The Go Connors. Ahead. Very nice. I told you I know my stuff. I believe you. It didn't sound like you did. All right, on to the next question. This movie musical is a reboot of the original from 1988 on the same name and stars John Travolt playing the mother of Christopher Walken as a father. Oh, um, oh. I'm going to need an answer soon. Thank you. Oh. Hairspray? That's correct. Wow, we have a tie game right now. Both with three points each. I'm coming back. Relax, okay? Let's go on to the next question. Disney has done a lot of remakes recently, but this particular one has Will Smith playing a genie. Aladdin. Ha, huh. suck it. That's correct. Can we please keep it civil? I don't want to have to make you forfeit because you can't behave. I'm sorry. Yes, Aladdin is correct. Sam, did you know that one? Are you a Disney fan? Of course I am. Of course. Just got just got to be faster on the buzzer, I guess, you know. I'm off it. <sighs> this speaking of Disney, this is a live action movie. It's one of the most successful remakes over ever in stars Beyoncé and Donald Glover. Lion King. That is correct. I wow. So. wow, we are back to the having a tie game. Can't wait to see who takes this one. We come back from the commercial break. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, My kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. 
Stairs. Four out of five college students suffer from fear of stairs. Whether it be to the first floor, the third, or the sixth, the fear is strong. But we need to stop this. We need to work together and conquer these stairs, step by step. So stop taking the elevator, take a deep breath, and take the first step to a new you. Welcome back to Media Toothpick Trivia, where this week's game is all about reboots, remakes, and revivals. Right now we have a tie score, with both our lovely contestants earning our four points each. How are you guys feeling? I'm feeling great. I had a rocky start, but I really think I got this in the bag. Yeah, we'll see about that. Those are fighting words. Okay, let's start the next round with this question. This television reboot is the same name of its original in the 1970s, but follows a Latino family starring Rita Moreno. I'm Hispanic, so hesitant is a, is it a day at a time? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, hold up. The correct one is the at a time. Very close though. This next question, this Marvel reboot originally starred Ed Norton in the, tel in the TV version, but Mark Raffle is the star of this movie that came out in 2008. The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk is correct. You are now back in first place, leading five to four. Not for long. Okay, can you please stop, stop. threatening our guests? They started it. They haven't done anything wrong. If you keep this up, you won't be able to play trivia ever again. Okay. Okay. I'll stop. Thank you. Sorry about that, folks. All right, let's get on with the next question, shall we? David Lynch attempted to adapt the sci-fi novel in 1984 film. Then in 2021, this new adaption split the film into two chapters that stars Tim Timothy Charmlet. Anybody have an answer? Nobody? Well, nobody gets a point for that one. Obviously. Obviously. The answer is Dune. Never would have guessed that in a million years. Well, let's see if this question is a little easier. This mother and daughter end up switching lives and are forced to walk in each other's shoes, literally. The original came out in 1976, and its remake came out in 2003. Go ahead. Is, is it Freaky Friday? It is indeed Freaky Friday. Oh, wow, I was nervous on that one. Okay, let's head to the next question. This was a reboot from 1989 to 1984 of a variety show from the 1950s. Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, and Christian, Christina... Aguilera all starred in this reboot. Is it the Mickey Mouse Club? Wow. I was a little nervous nobody was going to get that one. Well, I'm surprised I got that one too. What can I say? This has been a great so great game so far. All right, we're tied again. Let's get on to the next question. This TV show is getting a revival set in, in the 90s and Red and Kitty's granddaughter visiting for the summer in Wisconsin. What is the name of the original show that stars uh, Topher Grace? The 70s show. That's correct. What can I say? I had no idea that there was a revival of it, but of course it's set in the 90s. It hasn't come out yet, but yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Everything is set in the 90s now. All right, is everyone ready for the next question? Sam is up by one, but it's clearly anybody's game. Here we go. This movie is about twins separated at birth, each raised by one of their biological parents. The remake starred Lindsay Lohan playing both roles of the twins. Duh, the parent trap. You know, that's correct. You know, it wasn't until recently that I found out Lindsay Lohan doesn't actually have a twin. You probably should have kept that one to yourself. 
<laughs> All right, next question. This sitcom is an adaptation of the play by Neil Simon of the same name and rebooted in 2015, sorry, Matthew Perry, or what's he's best known for, Chandler bring, bring Chandler brings from Friends. Unsure man with a plan? I'm sorry, no. Wrong friend star. That was Matt Lee Blonick. Matthew Perry starred in The Odd Couple. Dang, I knew it was one of them. Well, you picked the wrong one, clearly. Do you want to take this outside? Okay, enough. Tranquila. We have one more question and still have a tie game, so the question will determine the winner. Are we ready? Yes. All right. It started out as a TV show in the 1970s about three crime-fighting women, was then rebooted as a movie starring Drew Barrymore and rebooted again in 2019 with Kristen Stewart. <sighs> Go ahead. Charlie's Angels. That's correct. Our first ever winner of Media Toothpick. Trivia is our very own co-host. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sam. What can I say? Don't worry, though. You won't be leaving empty-handed. Really? Our crew will make sure you shake your hand on the way out and leave you with our germs. Great. No hard feelings, Sam? You were a great competition. You know your stuff. So do you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me, of course. So, how does it feel to win our very first game of trivia? It feels amazing. I feel really prepared for this my entire life, you know? Watching any movies or TV shows, I can't. I really feel like I deserve this. Okay, well. I would also like to thank my mom for always letting me watch TV and my dad who used to sneak me downstairs when a good movie was on after my bedtime and my dog for being there every step of the way. It's really not necessary to make a speech right now. I know, but I just felt like they should be acknowledged. It's a big day for me, and I want to share the joy. Why don't you share your recommendation again with everyone instead? I can do that. Make sure you all check out A League of Their Own series on Time Video. Right now, there's only one season, but we're hoping to hear about it, about it being picked up for a second one really soon. Excellent. And we want to thank you, our contestant, again, for stopping in and playing with us. We hope you'll come back and, again, play another round. I would love that. I gotta get my redemption on her. That might be hard if you're playing against me again. Maybe we'll give you an easier an opponent next time. We really need to talk about your competitiveness. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, on that note, that's it for this ep episode of Media Toothpick. We hope, you, we hope you've enjoyed yourself. I did. I really did. What was your favorite part? I mean, winning against him, obviously. Of course. We hope you join us next week to see who wins the next round of trivia. Yeah, it's everything about Halloween and horror and all that fun stuff. I'm really curious to see what the recommendation is going to be. Oh, I can't wait for that. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.